and welcome to Convict Inc. I am your host, Robert Rosso. It is Friday, August the 30th, and um, after giving myself an enema last night, <laughs> I was taken to, to Duke Hospital today and uh, had a, what was it, a CT, CAT scan, PET scan, whatever. Uh, I guess they're doing a closer look at my prostate, uh, the biopsy wasn't enough I, I didn't even know I had no idea this was even happening uh, I didn't my urologist didn't mention it but whatever as long as I'm here and I can get this stuff done save me from doing it when I get out there uh, so we'll see, we'll see how that goes and I'll keep people informed also I still have a GoFundMe page up uh, I do want to thank everybody who's contributed to it it means a lot it's really got me over a hump um, for two months right now as it stands of uh, my mortgage and, and for those of you that don't know when I came to prison um, I knew I was going to be violated and, <clears throat> excuse me and on January the 18th I, when I went in front of the judge I expected to be violated that day and I had uh, a lease worked out with the girl for a year she wanted two I wanted one but whatever anyway um, I, I stayed out and of course, I was arrested a couple weeks later. Uh, marshals came and got me, but at that time, um, had two different people in the house um, that are, one of them did pay for a month and the other one, <sighs> things happen. Nobody's paying and, and I'm in jeopardy losing my house. However, like I said, I've got over a bump. I don't want to cry wolf when it's, when it's not happening. Meaning I've got, I was two months behind. I took care of last month because of you guys out there and uh this month so that's where i'm at right now and that's just being that's full disclosure people and i do have i am in for uh, early release right now i'm in for um a home confinement not not a halfway house uh if that means i have to go to a halfway house for a week first so be it um i was not going to do this I, I said that before i didn't want to take up the bed space and i still don't but um if i can get out there and start uh, making money then that's the deal I, I need to do that so anyway um here we go so uh, many of you many of you have watched the netflix series uh the tiger king and um i read the book the other day it's called tiger wars joe exotic versus the big cat queen uh al Samino, i think it was or something like that i got a little note right here to myself anyway in the book there's a quote from a guy who uh was a former ex-con is how they put it or is this jackass let me see um yeah okay so this guy knew joe exotic on the street his name was uh glover alan glover and he talked to the to the daily mail after joe was sentenced and we'll get into the whole thing in just a second but he made a comment this is a guy who's a career criminal and says it proudly and um he, he says, uh, a veteran, as a veteran convict, Glover, so Alan Glover, Glover says he didn't believe Joe would last long in prison. He's not ever going to set foot out alive of prison again. He won't do his full sentence. I give him five years at the most before he's dead. This call is from a federal prison. To know the mindset it takes to survive. I spent a long time in prison and Joe doesn't have what it takes. Um, Mr. Alan Glover, if you can hear me. Um, wrong. So, I am at the Federal Medical Center uh, that, that specializes in cancer in the BOP. And Joe Exotic, as he goes by, uh, that's the name that they, he was tagged with in the series. Uh, he was here he, after he was sentenced to 20 years in prison. It's, I'm not going to go in, so I'm not going into the case uh, on this audio. I'm just here to really talk about uh, how he how he's doing his time they really based off that that actual sentence um, that's what actually started this um, when I get out I, I have the freedom to speak more freely uh, so I will but for now this is what I can say and uh, to people that that didn't like the Tiger King or, or Mr. Joe Exotic himself or the people that did like him and want to know how he's doing. He has not been here, and I think it's been a year. I, maybe not quite a year. And a quick search of the uh, uh, BOP.gov uh, inmate locator will tell you where he's at. Um, we, we believe he's at Fort Worth. So three guys who I sit with every day, 
were here with him. Uh, many more guys actually were. But three guys who I sit with every day were actually close with him. And when I say close, that means you watch TV together every day. You might break bread. That means he, whatever, whatever the deal was. Um, when he got here, I, I, from what I understand, he was originally placed in um, the shoe or in some kind of a segregation unit. And uh, I believe it had something to do with him trying to get a radio deal. So there, there's some comment in the book that said Joe was said to be negotiating his, home, his own radio show to be broadcasted from inside prison. And what I want to say about that is when I got here and um, I was approached by the powers that be, they came to me and they weren't focused on my YouTube stuff. They were focused on my prior work as a journalist for Vice. And that was their biggest concern. Uh, when I was in this institution, I had a website and that website uh, was was what they ultimately used to kick me out. I wrote an article. They said I was a roaming journalist in prison, and they sent me, and they got Joey, this guy Joey tested to back them up and say I was a threat and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, they came to me, and they said that. Um, what was your deal? They wanted to know what the deal was, and they brought up Joe Exotic. They said, we just turned the guy down trying to do a radio program from here and so forth. But that was a different situation. He didn't have something prior set up. He was making money. Uh, he was trying to negotiate with the network. It was a different set of circumstances. And, and um, But they tied me into that whole thing with the Tiger King. And that, that uh, one of the first things I talked about when I got here with some of my friends was, you know, what was he trying to do? Yes, he was basically, and I guess he does do some stuff on Facebook from what I understand. Uh, he was trying to get something going. Um, you're not able to start stuff when you're in prison. You're not supposed, well, uh, I can't, I'm not gonna get into that. But anyway, here's the deal. Uh, he was out, he was put in segregation for a while and uh, he came out. Now he is openly gay. Um, Two of the guys that I'm around right now, you would, no, under normal circumstances, and, and, and I'm going to say it was because of Joe's celebrity, I don't think that would be uh, too far-fetched, uh, kind of were curious about him and then ultimately accepted him. Um, typically, people that are that are out in prison, uh, they run, they're usually run a lot with Christians, and I'm not trying to beat up on Christian. I'm a Christian myself. I'm just talking about a prison Christian, and people that know or have done time know what I'm talking about. But it's a different it's a different set of circumstances. Now, he, Joe Exotic, in the joint, openly gay, in the joint, having a relationship in here with a young Hispanic boy, girl, whatever. Um, so he's the, he's for for all of you in the know, he is the. He's the top. So that was one of the things that I was explained to before that I didn't really, I didn't really understand or, or never really knew um, was the difference between uh, the, the top and the bottom. So <laughs> he did explain that to one of my friends that he's never been on the bottom. So there's some breaking news about Joe Exotic, never been on the bottom. <laughs> so if you wanna know, um, let me call back on, on the second one. I'm gonna talk about some tattoos. This call is from a... Okay, all right, everybody. This is the second phone call, part two. So I just talked to some of my friends uh, that were, or two of my friends that were here with Joe. And I want to say this. Uh, he wasn't on, uh, he lived on 4C in cell 19. And one of the funny things was, I guess he had some dream catcher that he had up there. And it wasn't only a dream catcher. They had chicken bones hanging from strings in that cell. Um don't really know what that was all about. I know he had a love for animals. Uh, so I don't really know what the, ch I was told by one that it was actually a chicken bone dream catcher, but then there was also just chicken bones with strings on it, period. Uh, another one is my friend Gary Suttles uh, became friends with Joe and, and uh, it's on Joe Exotic's Facebook that Joe Exotic said that Gary Suttles was one of his best friends he ever met in prison or something to that nature. And um, Gary just wants to say that uh, he's one of the one of the better guys he's met despite all the stuff that's going on about there in prison. He was a true gentleman. 
and uh, he was glad that their paths crossed. Then you have Carl Bender, who's in here. He has cancer. He's kind of, he had back surgery. The cancer ate up his back. He's in bed, kind of bedridden right now. Um, he said that he left more than a year ago. That's Joe Exotic. And he actually back then was doing tattoos. Um, tattoos are prohibited. I need to put that out. He does not do them no more and hasn't for over a year. Like I said, this guy's in bed. Um, he's he's uh, trying to rehab his back, but the cancer went into his back. Or they did some surgery on him a couple months ago, and he's pretty much bedridden. It's Carl Bender. Anyway, Bender did tattoos, and the tattoos that he did on Joe Exotic were two cat, two two tigers on the back of his calves. Um, and um, on one of his, I think his right thigh was a picture of his, I don't know if it was his husband or lover or want somebody on, on the right thigh on the outside. And on the other side, it was the same husband, lover, whatever of that person, a portrait of his children, not Joe's own children, but his his lover, boyfriend, husband. I'm not sure if it's the same one he was married to that was in the book. Uh, what was the name of... Uh, let me see. I got this right in front of me right now. Oh, letter from Joe. Okay, anyway. So, but yeah, the... Um, or C. Uh, staff, uh, the staff that I've talked to about him all said that he was... Uh, a great guy. He he uh, he looked out for a lot of people when he was in here. Um, he liked to joke real on joke time, twenty four seven. Great sense of humor. Great personality. Um, I never saw the series on Netflix. Uh, I want to say that we started to watch it. Uh, my uh, ex wife and I. I don't ever recall us watching the whole thing, or maybe I did it by myself. I I don't really remember. I don't know too much about the case. I just read the book. Uh, I will say that I have contact information, so if people that know Joe, when I get out, uh, I'll be contacting you to go on the show if you guys will. Anyway, and, and there'll be there'll be more in in-depth. Like I said, these are audios. I can only say so much. I'm in, this call is from a federal prison. Trying to respect everybody as much as I can, that staff and inmates alike. Um, but I want to... I also want to say that he tried to, Joe Exotic tried to, tried to reach out to Trump when Trump was president, uh, try to get a pardon. I remember that uh, Trump was asked about it. He really didn't know him. I think Don Jr. was asked, and he was kind of making a joke about it once upon a time. Obviously, that didn't happen. Uh, this is, I got a, some of the, some of the letter, let's see. I mean, okay, they, they have in this book a letter that he wrote to Trump, and it's in it it says, I am being sent to prison for a form being filled out wrong by my vet secretary under the Endangered Species Act. I am being sent to prison for forms filled out wrong by the zoo manager while I was over a thousand miles away under the Endangered Species Act. I am being sent to prison for euthanizing my own tigers that were born and raised at my zoo to keep them from suffering because Congress did not put in the wording, the word take was meant for animals in the wild, not in America. Joe's contention was that he had not taken any animals from the wild. His animals were bred in captivities, therefore his defense uh, was basically that he could euthanize his own animals. My trial was not about the truth. It was about a win for the prosecutors he wrote to Donald Trump. All my proof was turned over and completely ignored just to push animal rights agendas to ban owning exotic animals. Mr. President, I am pleading with you to please have this looked into. I'm currently incarcerated at the Grady County Jail. Oof, I know about Grady. It's horrible. In Oklahoma and facing 25 years in prison for doing the same thing every zoo and sanctuary owner has done. Uh... Uh, has had to do it one time or the other. Anyway, so uh, one of the journalists, oh, I'm sorry, this was his husband. His husband's name it was Dylan. Dylan wrote, I think his main goal, his main goal when he gets out of jail is to rebuild his reputation because it was totally tarnished and torn to pieces. And torn 
to pieces once he got arrested. <laughs> everybody right, everybody right now is is uh, I shouldn't say everybody. There's there's some of my friends are all watching me, thinking like they're filming me do this right now because I'm doing this YouTube thing. <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, what else? So yeah, Joe Exotic. Uh, what else do I have to say about him? I, like I said, great guy. Um, had a young, young Hispanic who barely spoke English was his was his boyfriend for a minute. Was transferred to um, uh, to the medical center. I said in the beginning into Fort Worth, Texas. And I think that's where he's at today. He didn't have AIDS. The people said that. I read this in the book. He had some kind of blood disease, and he said that before. This call is from a federal prison. Answer, I believe it was, pro I want to say prostate when he was here, but they, they dealt with that. Uh, but yeah, everybody likes, so whatever whatever that guy had to say about him, whatever the guy said that as far as he's not going to make it in prison, totally false. Uh, people on celebrity status like that, it depends what prison you're at, whether or not uh, you're going to have a hard time. This complex, certainly somebody wouldn't. Again, Bernie Madoff was here. That's that should say it all, and did fine throughout this this, this uh, institution, and uh, not institution, this complex, I should say. So, yeah. That being said, I saw last night uh, the interview with Harris, and I'm going to say to everybody out there who watched it, you can see why now that they keep her out of the spotlight. 100%, they keep her hidden, she probably win. They put her on the camera, she don't think she has a chance. She's so condescending. And now, I like how she does that pivot and says she, that her values haven't changed. All her policy positions can change, it doesn't really matter, because her values haven't changed. And then she goes on to talk about how she's always been for fracking, that she talked about it. she was for fracking and voted for fracking. Well, tell everybody in fracking states that, that she's for fracking the ones that don't have jobs because there's a lot of jobs that could be had that they're not that they're, that are not happening because of this administration right now. This is the, the third phone call um, today. Anyway, you know, I'm very aware of, of all the pauses and it really messes me up when I go um 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 a lot. And I'm sorry. I apologize to everybody. I do want to thank the people that are still coming on, new subs and the old subs that have hung with me. Um, I, really, I, I appreciate the support, and I appreciate you guys uh, being tolerant of this. I know that there's a guy out of California that does uh, some content from, from inside the joint, and he does a really, really good job. I never expected to be in prison doing this, but yet here I am, and I'm trying to just to do the best, to do whatever I can under the circumstances. But I always have to watch myself, I'm trying to be conscious of staff, I'm trying to be conscious of inmate privacy, the ones that do want to say it, got to be watch the guys around me, people are watching me talk, people are paying attention to what I'm saying, it, everything echoes the whole unit. When I talk, when during on the phone, when I'm talking to you right now, people at the other end can hear this anyway, so there's that. So I was talking about politics for a minute, and, and I want to, on that note, tying politics into criminal justice stuff. Um, right now, it seems like there may be a push for clemency going on with the with the Biden with the Biden administration. It does seem that way, appears that way. I know inmate.com is going crazy right now. People are all of a sudden starting to toss a bunch of petitions and file a bunch of petitions in because Kim Kardashian came out and um, voiced to Biden that she wants to see him do some historic clemency petitions. He's in a perfect spot too. Joe Biden is the architect, not the sole architect. He played an instrument, uh, no, not instrument, uh, just a huge pivotal role, instrumental role, that's the right word. And the whole uh, get tough on crime stuff um, that's happened since the 80s, and I know out there it doesn't seem like it or appear like it, especially when you watch the news. When you watch the news, you think that America's just gone wild, and you think that people, more people need to be locked up, and I agree more violent criminals do, but they, it never works out that way. It's either the drug offenders, the low-level drug offenders, and now you got the clickers, and I'm not advocating for, for less or, or um, leniency on these, on these uh 
pedophiles or these people that get all these clicker cases, these child pornography cases. I'm not. But those aren't the people that are doing the damage to all the children. They're doing damage because they're watching it. So so somebody that actually does uh, the filming or the, the production of that stuff, I mean, needs to be murdered. Point blank. Whatever. Or, you know, uh, but whatever. My point is, is that our criminal justice system is flawed because the people that they actually have to put time and investigation into, it's, it's, they're, not, they're not getting the right ones. So please don't be swayed by what you see on the news and think that everybody needs to be locked up or more importantly that we need tougher crime, tougher penalties. We do not. We need a smarter sentencing structure. We don't have that. Uh, I am going to get into that when I get out. I'm going to start with the guidelines and explain to people how, what, how everything went wild, what, what's happened, where we're at. And I hope my judge and everybody else in the criminal justice circuit is listening too. Um, not that I'm trying to school or educate him or them, but um, I'm going to finally actually make some points. I've been talking about, oh, being a criminal justice reform advocate for so long, but I've never really put forward a plan or, or different things. And I'm actually taking different ideas in here from guys and officers alike to try to figure something out uh, and uh, to, to from for content on YouTube and, and to uh, to try to try to affect change someday. Getting back to the Tiger King for a second, the one thing I noticed, uh, I don't know the guy. I know the guy. My friend, people I know in here liked him a lot. Okay, now I, there's people in here that I like that people out there probably couldn't stand. You know, this is an upside down world for sure. But one, there's a common theme that happens to prisoners over and over again. Especially if the person used drugs. They are... This call is from a federal prison. Master manipulators, and you can't believe a word they said. You know, in good times, everybody's... There's no problem with that person. But when the shit hits the fan, when that person starts buckling, folding, having problems, addiction issues, whatever, then they're pieces of shit. But before that, even if they're in, not in active addiction, or they are in active addictions, but nobody knows, they're still great people. This happened, like, it looks like this happened with the Tiger King guy, too. I don't know. Uh, in here, people are saying, I thought that he was, I thought that he was an addict. I thought that he used drugs in here and stuff because he talked about using meth and stuff in the past. Talked about people um, in his circle or people that lived and worked for him were, were former drug addicts, you know, were, were active users. Uh, um, people that society, outcasts of society, I guess. So I assumed that he was a user in prison. He was not. Um, I was actually shocked by that because uh, when I was when they were telling me stories about him before, I thought that they were saying he got high too. No, he just threw some money around and made sure everybody had a good time. You can read between the lines, whatever. But he um, he he was all about people having a good time, whether that's cookouts, food in here, whatever. But uh, he got smutted up. Uh, books don't sell when you write a bunch of great things about somebody unless it's a biography or an autobiography about somebody that's turned their life around, that will sell. But in general, these crime books or true crime books, they sell based on like the worst of the worst that people do or they're, they're, they're over-dramatized, sensationalized, or they're just factual, they're, they're, just, they're just outright lies. Uh, I was gonna say factually incorrect. So, yeah, uh, what else? Now that I've rambled on, I'm trying to throw as much out there as I can before lockdown, which is coming right now. Uh, right before I got back on the phone for call number three, my friend that came back from the hospital who was sick, uh, we, we just helped. Uh, he's still he's still not out of the woods, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, uh, thoughts and prayers for him. Uh, his name's Randy, by the way. I, I, anybody out there that... Uh, that believes in God, maybe some thoughts, maybe some prayers for him. And I'm not saying that he's not on his deathbed right now. I'm not. I'm saying that he doesn't look great. Uh, and everybody can use a, a prayer now and then, too, including myself. So thoughts and prayers for Robert Rosso, too, if you will. <laughs> uh, and uh, finally, once again, there's. Uh, I, I, will, I will finish this like I started it. I, I still do need... Uh, 
Uh, there's still a GoFundMe page up there for me. Any little bit can do it. I mean $5 a night. I genuinely mean that. Otherwise, um, we'll see. My paperwork should be uh, coming back soon to say what's going to happen. Are they going to let me go home? A home confinement, ankle bracelet, not, whatever. Or say no. If not, January 27th. I'll be going to California first, then home. I'm still going to, so unless I go home on compassion. This call is from a federal prison. Go home on uh, uh, home confinement or a halfway house for a couple days, whatever. I'm going to California still. Okay, they're locking down. I got to go. Everybody take care. Thanks for your support.